And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a returning good brother to the temple, the mad, the madman behind the multi-headed hydra that is Shades of Vengeance. Previously on the on the show for Era Dragon Song, now coming back with Era Dreadwest, the one and only Dread, Ed Jowett. Dread West. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing today, man? Um, yeah, I'm great. Uh, it's it's fantastic to be back again. Mm. Obviously, you, you, yeah, last time I was on it was Dragon Song. Then before that, it was for Empowered Fifth Anniversary, and then before mm. that, blah 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 blah. Mm. Uh, it's it's always great to be back, and every time I'm kicking off a kickstarter if you'll excuse the expression i'm i'm thinking right when can i when can i get on with mildred when can i go have a chat about what i'm doing latest because i love i love talking to you i love i love reaching out to your audience and and saying hi to, to anyone else who happens upon the temple yeah this will um, be so, yeah. the eighth, no, this will be back. <laughs> really this will be the eighth time i've ha i've had you in the temple since i started these interviews <laughs> eighth yeah okay I, I, I'm. It feels like more, but I. I, I mean, you, you're the expert, but but mm -hmm. it feels like more to me. Huh. Anyway, uh, but... I'm. I'm pleased and proud for it to be the eighth, uh, yeah. uh, and I look forward to the ninth, tenth, and so on. But for now, <laughs> yeah, let's focus on the eighth. So, I, re I remember Dreadwest getting men getting mentioned a bit. I think I think during one of the times when I, when. You went um. Quite, you were still quite possibly. It's actually been in the works for three years. Yeah, I um, do recall it. I do recall it getting hinted at a few years back when I had you on for um a compilation of the Arizona uh, zine. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Uh but I I suppose I suppose the first thing to get into since this is essentially a, essentially a Wild West horror. Um, what, what was your, what was your first introduction to the idea, to the idea of doing a, um, essentially a Weird West kind of affair? Was, was your introduction to that concept like Deadlands or was it something else that, um, piqued your interest to want to do that kind of genre? So it's actually, it's actually a few things in combination, um, Really, the idea's been with me for a long time because someone vaguely explained. Uh, you, you, you know that that thing that's going around on social media sometimes. Explain badly, thing. Yeah. So someone explained dogs in the vineyard badly to me. Um, <laughs> and 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 it was just like, oh, okay, I could I could do something a bit like that. And then it went on the back burner for literally years before I even you know before that three years that it's been worked on started, mm -hmm. it was on the back burner for, for years and years and years. And then I played a computer game um, called Resonance of Fate, which oh, yeah. was a, a very JRPG, but mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me some ideas around some mechanics, which I think are really quite interesting, mm -hmm. and make fighting the incubi in dead west very different to fighting other gunslingers mm -hmm. um so i sort of grabbed that and put it in and 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 over time i sort of accumulated from a whole bunch of different places and then um the era the chosen universe offers this opportunity to have demons uh you know it, it already exists within that framework and I thought, okay, well, what I can do is sort of go somewhere else in a different time, but on the same planet. And then go, right, boom. Huge open space, you know, like like mind-bogglingly huge to me, because I'm English and, and my entire my entire island is is far, far smaller than the size of the Dead West even is. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people will ride for days or weeks and not see anything. Um, so I, I sort of brought all of these elements together and went, okay, well, there aren't that many Wild West role-playing games, so I wanted to sort of allow 
people to play that if they wanted. And then I wanted to add in this this uh, incubus element of uh, sort of the, the, the demons that, that emerge from the portals and steal people and cattle in the middle of the night. You know, you, you're going to want to deal with that if that's something that's happening to your settlement. And there come the player characters, the gunslingers, who are going to try and fight off the the demons for various people, or indeed themselves. But at the same time, you know, gun, gunslingers, they're, they're notorious. Um, I, you know, I grew up watching Clint Eastwood movies, and uh, as in World West Clint, mm-hmm. Clint Eastwood movies. Um, and, and, you know, The Magnificent Seven and so on. You know, gu- Gunslingers are very, very unpredictable mm-hmm. uh, in, in those movies. And um, I wanted it to be the case that, you know, you can you can do the shootout at the OK Corral if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you can do the shootout at the OK Corral interrupted by demons who appear at sunset to kill everybody. It does explain why all the shootouts happen at high noon, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it's it it's, just fits. it just yeah. there are a lot of small elements that happen, you know, mm-hmm. that that all fit together to make this a fun, compelling world. Yeah, and fo- following in following in from that, the the idea of of um fighting against the things that go bump in the night is certainly no- is certainly nothing new for for you, given some of the other entries within the um for lack of a better term era verse. <laughs> I'll go with it. I like it. I quite yeah. like it, actually. I mean, let's see which one. You left. You left. I because there was um. There's era of the chosen, yeah. which yeah. as I said, they're in the same world as. But there's also era bloodlines, which mm-hmm. was one of the era zone issues that you referred to earlier. Yep. Uh, which was sort of a um a modern or medieval werewolves and vampires and. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and mm-hmm. Grimm and and Supernatural and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've done a couple, and then there's Revival, which is obviously sci-fi, but very much things that go bump in the night. Mm-hmm. I remember reading a long time ago, um, about uh the Buffy episode. Oh, what's it called? The one that's totally silent with the gentleman. You know the one I mean. I know the one. It's just the title oh, of the episode's not coming to me. Can't hit the name. I, I it'll come to me later. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. But I, I, you know, I, I watched. I, I read something about that episode mm-hmm. about how you know, no, this isn't actually like a folklore thing. It's something that he kind of came up with. Joss Whedon kind of came up with for. You're just amalgamating a lot of different elements of um, horror, and 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 uh, I also remember one uh, where she's in a hospital, and there's a demon that 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 is killing things in the hospital by by suffocating them. You know, it's I, I read a similar thing about that episode. He he did a lot of amalgamating things together to make something that was truly horrific and terrifying mm. uh for for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. And and I I I kind of found myself doing a very similar thing for Era Dead West. Mm. There's um there's very little description of the world. Uh, there's a there's a taste explanation, you know, what 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 does the world look, feel, smell, taste like? But that's about it. Uh, you know, if if you want the if you want your town to be large or small or or run by a group of gangsters who are just just about good enough to be you know appear legal or you know actually be a a, a fairly decent little town or whatever mm-hmm. do do your thing name your town you know put your town together the way you want to based on the tropes that you want to explore in your game it, yeah. the idea is to leave it open this this scaffolding open for Whatever it is that people would like to play. Mm-hmm. Now, you're. F- I've talked with you about the concept of, of appendix N or inspirational media. Uh, what aside from Resonance of Fade, which we already mentioned, or End of Eternity, as it's known in Japan for some reason. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. Um. 
originally I had thought I had thought that it was that it was changed the residence of fate because they didn't want to piss off the Asimov estate. It turns out that wasn't the case. Um, but what would you say would be some would be some of the inspirational media that you'd po that you'd point to when it comes to getting the intended feel for something like D Dread West or sorry Dead West? <laughs> it's but, easy yeah, to put the R in there. <laughs> um. So um. Like I said, uh, it all started with dogs in the vineyard being explained to me really badly, mm -hmm. right? Um, no, no offense to that person. Should he ever come across this and listen, it was just it. What I took away from it did not represent what the game really is, mm -hmm. which is fine. There's no problem with that. Um, and then I threw in, you know, the 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 Clint Eastwood movies that I mentioned earlier, the Man with No Name, the that that feeling that everyone is a little bit intimidated by something. Mm -hmm. And then rather than it being whichever guy called Ramon is in charge, the, small joke for a fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more for anyone who's 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 uh, a bit of fan of those movies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I changed it from being a person that scares most people to being something that's a supernatural force that can't easily be defeated beyond a person who... You know, if if you're willing to give your own life, you could stop this this person. You can't stop the 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 incubi. You, I mean, you can kill them with enough skill, but you can't just you can't really ever stop them from coming because there are always more. They come from another dimension through portals. You you don't know how many there are. You can't stop the portals opening. So all you can really do is fight a defensive battle with the right people. Yeah. And that makes it very flavorful in itself because everybody is afraid. Mm -hmm. And people, when they're afraid, act very... swiftly. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you add to that that the gunslingers might have the confidence that they can win, but the reality is, even in groups, it's not good odds for gunslingers versus incubi. You know, you, you, you have to be careful, you have to be clever, you have to be prepared. And if you're not, you're just going to end up dead. Um, ripped to pieces if you're less than lucky with half of you through a portal into the demon mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to do that, and I'm going to have demons coming through portals, Era of the Chosen has this. So I, I, I did draw a lot on the world of Era of the Chosen, but there's a gap in Era of the Chosen, uh, deliberately so, where the Chosen families in Harbour City are not fighting the Ananasi between Victorian era and the modern era. Well, that's exactly where the Wild West sits. So what I wanted to do was pick up this mm -hmm. and 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 let people play in there but it's away from harbor city because i wanted this vastness of humanity this difficulty in finding help when you need it so if a group of gunslingers rides through and you're having trouble with incubi you will be begging them and offering them any amount of money you can find to help you because they have the resources and the experience to actually win. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that in mind, mm. uh, the I, sp I suppose one of the bi one of the big things that r that was r that was really put fo put in focus on the Kickstarter is. How you're handling the how you're handling the guns in this in this kind of um, grid based customization affair? As as someone who's played Resonance of Fate, it will be broadly familiar. Oh yes, um, down to down to the down to the grid approach, the um, har the various hard points that different that different weapons have. I I and... loved the idea that they had there. You know, I I just thought it was very very clever. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I looked around and I there's no there's no customization system like that in the tabletop RPG that I could yeah. find. 
I'd imagine a, I'd imagine a lot of people, a lot of people. There's been there's been plenty of customization of affairs, but it's always been a case of, okay, you can equip this type this type of attachment to this specific area, but never right. a whole lot of mix and match. Essentially, the same sort of customization you would see with add-ons in um, any FPS in the last twenty years. Which... Right. Uh, the the thing that really appeals to me about the grid based system, mm -hmm. right? is it limits the amount that you can change your weapon while still giving you the option of changing it the way you want to. You don't say you can only have five attachments, it's got to be, you know, one on the barrel and one on the one on the the, the um stock and, and whatever. You can have anything you want with this grid based system. So it you know if 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 the thing that appeals to you is more chance of damaging. Okay, you're adding barrels. You're adding barrels all over the place, similar to the GIF uh, that's in the Kickstarter. You, you're just adding barrels and, and, and putting on things that turn it 90 degrees so you can add more barrels and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if you, you could get the same gun and add millions of scopes on it instead because that's the thing you want. And, and that is unbelievably powerful while still not letting the players get ridiculous with it. Because there's still a limit to what you can fit in the grid. Mm -hmm. That really appeals to me. And and uh, unlike uh, Resonance of Fate, you have to have five squares of a thing before it means anything. So you have to really plan carefully if you're going to make use of what you've got. Mm-hmm. And you could be you could be looking for a specific part for quite a while. Yeah. And of course, of course, the with the, of course with even with it even with it within that there's still the there's still the issue of met of managing managing size and moving it about. Um, mm. In a in a way that's. Um, I remember, I remember when I was explaining this to a, to a friend of mine, and I had said, "If you that it's not that far removed from the from the way people would twist themselves into knots to get things to fit into that suitcase in every Resident Evil game of note, or in yeah. some, or in some cases fit fit it around the that grid set up in um, Diablo." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you'd be dropping stuff in the in in the, in the cube. Mm -hmm. uh, in Diablo 2, you'd be dropping stuff in the cube because that's actually extra squares that you get and you have mm -hmm. to, the Heratric cube, you have to carry it, so... Yeah, it's def it's definitely in the it's definitely in that, and unl and I'm, guess I'm guessing one of the things that you wanted to do once you had nailed down the concept is kind of, sta kind of standardize the, mo the modifiers so it's not, um, it's not in the same trap that a lot of attachment-based designs get, where they get ridiculously out of hand in terms of how many attachments. Because technically speaking, you only have maybe, I'd say, let's see, bar barrel, st barrel, stock, ext extensions, ammo, and sight. That's only six four. different types. It's four. Four. Yeah. Yeah, it's only four different types of extension. Each one has a genuine mechanical effect. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really they're all really useful. That's the point. You have to choose, mm -hmm. right? Um, I I put together the example that's in the Kickstarter to give an example of what choices you could make, mm -hmm. but um, it's not optimal. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind, um, for each site, each barrel, um, there are 10 different types of each attachment. Um, obviously, that means as a GM, if you want to do some loot, you can go, right, well, grab a dice, roll it. Okay, you get an ammo 3. You get a site 7. Um, that means that you could actually struggle to get the things that you want, and deliberately so. Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me, sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. I'm um, apparently a bit more tired than I thought. 
Um, um, so yeah, you can you, you you can struggle to get the things you want, but what you have those four types that they're, they're each very very powerful, and there isn't enough room in the grid to get everything you might want. Mm -hmm. You'll be making choices, and choices at the end of the day, they lead to variety, and variety is what makes a role playing game like this interesting. There are only three different types of handgun and three different types of rifle. Yeah, that's all there is. And I could, I'm pretty sure, and even even with that, there's there's kind there's kind of a motif going of you could put you could put of um the the size the size ultimately determining what you what um what you could what you could and could couldn't do. I mean, big um mm. a you can there's. Theoretically, more than you could do with a with a rifle, but that stuff is going to add up quick, especially with the rule of five that you have. It does add up quickly, and the rifles are slightly bigger, mm -hmm. so you can fit slightly more uh, in the grid. But uh, well, I mean, it goes all from a from a Derringer. You know, you can actually have one, but you actually have a restricted grid. You have a smaller grid for that gun. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other handguns have a, a medium-sized grid, and then the rifles have a larger grid. Um, that gives you some space, but it's not its not lots. Mm -hmm. So you, you are going to be making choices, and that's fantastic. That's a wonderful thing for players to be doing, because different people get hung up on different things. You know, oh, I might get hung up on not hitting, mm -hmm. and so you might got you might get hung up on not doing damage when you do hit. Mm. Well, you might be able to have both, but you definitely will be reloading every turn then because you you won't have any ammo as well. Yeah. Now, within e within each weapon, whether it be ranged or melee, there's a there's the fact that you're either inflicting health or pain damage depending on whether you're attacking an, a human or an incubus. Um, was that was that kind of approach? I mean, it's it's certainly built upon what already came before, but was some of that somewhat inspired by the two damage type that set up that Residence of Fate has? It was actually, yeah. Um, I I looked at the situation. Obviously, I thought, right, well, handguns in the wild west, you can fan the hammer, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll treat those as fast firing weapons. Also, of course, handgun bullets probably had slightly less penetration mm -hmm. probably um, um that's that's a rabbit hole i don't i really yeah. don't want to go into because that's that's where we get into the physics of of firearm it's engineering and it it get it's it doesn't end it, it's complicated but i you know for mechanics purposes mm -hmm. it makes sense that one is fast and does less damage and one is slow and does more mm -hmm. uh sorry but Wrong way around. One is fast and does more damage, and one is slow and does less. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I was quite brutal with the with the rifles in this game. Um, they only fire single shots unless you build up your ammo on the rifle. Mm -hmm. And they do one damage to things that have 14 or 15 health. They, they can't kill an incubus mm -hmm. in one shot. Unless you have... So the whole point was similar to Resonance of Fate. Having that feel of you've got to have a combination or it's never going to work. Mm -hmm. Right? You've got to do some kind of choice within the party. You've got to work together. Yeah. Especially especially since you are. It's not like you can. It's not like you can just fire infinitely. You will. Ha you will have to um, spend some time reloading. Yeah, you have to reload. You actually have to reload after every turn. Mm -hmm. Every combat turn, you have to reload. Yep. Yep. So uh, some of the weapons let you do that instead of moving, which sounds like a good deal mm -hmm. until you realize that there's an incubus charging at you, and moving might really be a very good idea. Now, when it comes when it comes to the weapon modifiers and how you have it s set up, um, I know I know that there's that there's numbered versions of each, but I'm I'm guessing that 
the numbered ver the numbered versions um the only thing that matters is how many is how many squares how many squares of space that they're taken up so if you have like a site 4 and a site 5 on the same on the same thing correct um yeah. the only thing that matters is how many squares worth of site as long as you have 5 5 is the magic number in this game mm -hmm. um if you have 5 you're okay if you have less than 5 you're getting no benefit for what you're putting in. Mm -hmm. And if you have more than five, or, you know, you can go to ten, obviously, but if you have six, then you're just wasting the extra square. You mm -hmm. need to be thinking really carefully about whether that's a good idea, because grid space is limited, as we just discussed. Yeah. And as far as as far as the red shapes, that's just a case of puzzle pieces. Uh, yes. So um, a, a difference from Resonance of Fate is... Um, in Resonance of Fate, if you've got a connector, you have to connect to it to put a thing there. Mm -hmm. I've said, no, 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 you can have a connector and just ignore that and not use it. As long as you have the connectors where it's attaching onto the weapon and they're all correct, you're fine. Yeah. Oh. In in that way, in that way, it ends up reminding me of that of that pipe dream g game that I remember playing as a little kid. I remember playing as a kid, and then but and then um that got reincarnated into that mini game in Bioshock. <laughs> oh right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I had I had first played it as part of this collection of of these simple S games on an on an old Windows PC. I remember Chips Challenge being am being among them as long as as well as um Free Cell and a few others. Um, right. And and um Ski Free. You know the you know the one that ga that gave so many people nightmares because of that damned abominable snowman. Uh, I'm not aware of that one actually. I I it must have passed me by. Um, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> sounds no, entertaining. It seems like it. It seems like a, It seems like a standard skiing game, and then abominable snowman shows up and eats you. <laughs> How odd. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've written three horror role-playing games now, and I'm sort of sat here thinking, wait, what? How does anyone come up with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> very weird. Still, it's unique. Mm -hmm. Oh, now with the, now with that in with that in mind. When it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the incubus, which is mm. get, which is going to be the main enemy that's fought at night, um, which them them only showing up at night certainly makes sense given how. Well, there, there's a reason why every why every one of the scary fairy fairy tales that we all dealt with as kids always night. deal always deal with at night because night when you do, when there, when there's not a whole lot of natural light to take advantage of is absolutely nightmare fuel i've <laughs> i've told you i've told you before about how um as a kid i was more scared of werewolves than i was of, i was of vampires because because wolves and wild dogs were something to contend with in some parts i'd grow up, grown up in um yeah i think you mentioned that before yeah mm -hmm. but would it, would it be fair to say that the way the way you would typically set up um, incubus forms that they're not that they're meant to that they are meant to be the focus of an encounter when they show up? I think that you could have some very interesting encounters where something else is going on and an incubus just wanders in mm -hmm. because that's equivalent to dropping a nuke on the town right it's just, literally nobody is safe at that point yeah you I, I could see people who were you know sat in the saloon gambling and and uh, you know cheating pulling guns on each other and then suddenly an incubus a portal opens and an incubus wanders in mm -hmm. it's like right well okay i guess our differences get put aside then yeah we can kill each other later <laughs> but exactly so um mm -hmm. well i can kill you later but if i if we don't work together to kill the incubus then neither of us will kill the other one and i certainly won't walk away mm -hmm. um it's 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 nice to have this greater threat that always exists mm 
Mm -hmm. Because as a GM, it means that you can tell a lot of different stories and evoke a lot of different emotions in your players. Oh, yeah. Now, going for, going for, going further in, uh, given given the fact that there's um, two two slots for handguns and rifles on the sh on the sheet proper, I am cu I am curious if uh, if the if the question of somebody do of somebody um, wielding bo wielding both handguns has been brought up in testing. Uh, it has been brought up, and I decided basically, no, you got to choose. The reason being, you can't really fan the hammer very well. Mm -hmm. um, so you will actually be less effective by using two handguns in in a world where they're revolvers, right? Yeah, that makes Using two is less good, because you've got to, you know, bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. Especially the single target. Yeah. Now that be that being that being said, with the di with the different forms, um, I am I am curious if 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 um if things like Resident Evil and Left 4 Dead served as influence when you were concepting some of them. So the windbag is actually inspired by Pandemona from uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, I can I can see it now now that you mention um... it. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of always, w I, I, I've been looking at that for such a long time, and I just thought to myself, that'd make a really good, like, demonic, scary thing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Martin Romero did such a good job of the artwork. Um, uh, uh, just really brought that to life, that idea. And then the, the entrail is, um, it's actually a reference to Turok. Uh, two, Turok two, Seeds of Evil, um, uh, and it's sort of Velociraptorish, but uh, there is an enemy called an Entrail in that game. So you know that's my little my little nod to one of the things that created the the Chosen Universe because I often describe it as Turok meets Doctor Who style horror. Mm -hmm. Um, and and so you know inclu including an Entrail, um as an idea then there's obviously a horse I, I just i love the idea of something that looks a bit like a horse but is like a demonic thing that's going to eat your flesh is hilarious i grew up around horses yeah. um i'm very very used to them but uh you know like they, they are enormous and very strong mm -hmm. and uh the the idea of one that was out for blood is actually pretty terrifying <laughs> Yeah, oh, my co my colleague my colleague in the temple Xanatrix has at least one story of getting kicked by a horse. <laughs> uh, I have dozens, <laughs> not to mention being trodden on, pulled over. Uh, yeah, a, a grown man leading a horse. The horse is three or four times as strong. Mm -hmm. It's just it's not even a competition. If it does not want to go where you're taking it, it's not going there. Yeah, and. That's just with the standard sizes. I've 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 always I've always find found interesting the difference between what can what people consider the standard size horse and some of those bigger um, war horses, which are yeah. which are just complete which are just complete absolute units. <laughs> huge, huge. Mm -hmm. Um, horses are very docile creatures in general. Which is very fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, at least domesticated horses that I grew up around are. Um, I wouldn't like to speak about wild horses. I really don't know enough. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, horses. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be really fun <laughs> to include them. Yeah. And, w well, we're, every, everybody conveniently forgets where the word nightmare comes from. So it's it's um, it's something that's a case of it of of being being an inevitability, especially since with with how so, with how so many th how many so many things in 
um, folklore are these horrific versions of, of things that it would be in day-to-day -day life. A demonic horse isn't out, isn't out of the um, question. Oh no, um, Ghost Rider did such a nice job of uh, of showing you what a demonic horse might look like on the on the uh, on the movie screen. Mm -hmm. I was going to say on the big screen. I've never I didn't see it on the big screen, but I have watched the movie. Yeah. Um, you can say a lot of bad things about that movie, and I, I you know I'll leave that on one side. But the the demonic horse was was a lot of fun. I actually defended that movie back in the day. Um, oh, I I actually quite like the movie. I, I I think there's a lot to like about it. Um, I I also watched the second one, and I think there's a lot less to like about it. I found um, the second one a disappointment because of who directed it. It's the same guys who did the Crank movies. Oh right. And given how the given how the Crank movies can be described as the wor the world's worst drug trip. <laughs> Oh, it it, yeah, it's, um, I, it it was disappointing that they didn't go that bit of crazy, especially since there was the question of, um, what happens if you go to if you have to go to the bathroom when you're in that when you're changed? <laughs> just <laughs> the and just the implication that he's pissing fire. I mean, and and they they made it a core plot point, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of like, okay, all right, whatever. I don't. I don't imagine he spends a lot of time pissing while he's changed into Ghost Rider, because he only changes into Ghost Rider when there's evil around. Yeah. Right. So I don't imagine that happens too often, if ever. Yeah, it's just. Um, it's I just felt... kind of like well, um, no. But the the first movie was was actually a nice tight story that didn't follow what's become the the superhero, uh, shall we say, formula. You know the the enemy wasn't just Ghost Rider by mm. any other name. It was it was something else that you know. And 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 I enjoyed that it was the 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 bad guy's arrogance that ultimately made him lose. Mm -hmm. Right? It's 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 a fun idea. You know, like it it it's. Okay, fine. Nicolas Cage. Okay, fine. The the whole his weirdly relaxed stunt riding is weird. Mm -hmm. uh, fine. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, no, I I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun enough. Mm -hmm. It didn't. You know the the idea that you that you made a deal with the devil and now you can't die, so you're so you're a dead devil. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, uh, I'm not certain. I'm I'm not super familiar with Ghost Rider's background. I actually think that is a comics thing. Yeah. Um. Uh. That that he became a daredevil because he knew he couldn't die. Um. That's that's mm -hmm. a fun idea. You know, it's 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 and they brought it to life really nicely. Mm -hmm. I I think it's a decent movie. I. Especially compared to some stuff that's being produced now. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's really <laughs> quite quite disappointing in the general case. Yeah, though th though that's a, that's a thing where if we if I dive into if I dive into that I'll be here for days. But within sorry, carbonation. Oh. No worries. Though the the way you describe it, it's, it sounds like. You, there's the implication that a portal can sh can show up the theoretically at any t at any time at night. Yep. Oh. In theory, they can show up in the day as well, but uh, the incubi wouldn't enjoy that very much. They don't like the light. Mm -hmm. It burns their skin. Think pitch black. Yeah, and I'm get I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing because of that having having torches or or illumination. Um, is no, is it, it's really the strength of the sun that makes the difference. So illumination or, or torches or you know whether it's electric lights or, or illumination, as you mm -hmm. say, um, is not going to do the job. Because mm -hmm. the obvious question that could, that could be asked is what is what stops 
them from just opening a portal in the middle of town at, n at night? And I'm guessing the answer is going to be one nothing. of those GM questions. Nothing. Mm -hmm. no nothing stops them from opening a, opening a portal in the middle of town and at any point in the night. Mm -hmm. That's entirely the point. Everyone in Dead West, in the Dead West, I should say, the Dead West, mm -hmm. every civilian who lives in the Dead West, the area, knows that they could die at any time because the Incubi might just appear and kill them. Mm -hmm. There are undoubtedly ghost towns where this has happened. Yeah. And... Now with now with all that said, um, what would you be shooting for as far as the page count? Since I know this is um going to be on the um pocket size and mm. end of things. Um, I've more or less got it. Uh, got my proof here. Had some changes I was just making earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, I am at forty four pages for the page count. Mm -hmm. Um, including character sheet inside back cover. Yeah. And um, for, for anyone, I, I forget if you include the video, Mildra. If you do, then for anyone who's interested, this is the this is the broad look of the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would you be shooting for as far as the release window? Oh, um, as you can see, I've more or less got it sorted out. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm hoping to get it out to backers. Certainly in digital form within two weeks of the Kickstarter ending. Mm -hmm. um, and then not too long after for the physical form, the printer that I use for pocket rulebooks usually delivers within about five working days. Mm -hmm. So I really don't expect it to take very long. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing a nice a nice sizable print run. We've, we've got a lot of people who are really interested in the, in the physical version of this. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, at the moment, I'm printing uh, uh, somewhere around 60 uh, just to meet the demand of the Kickstarter, let alone anything we might sell elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's that's really encouraging. And it's it's really nice because it's quite a big flip uh, from digital to physical waiting um, of the Kickstarter. You know, it's, it's, it's normally more common for me to get a few more digital than physical. Here, physical so far outweighs digital. So far. Mm -hmm. And with within that within that, uh, do you do you? I know I know. Um, you had already you had already shown a demonstration on the, um, on the weapon set on the weapon setup. Mm. Um, for the di for the digital end of things, do you plan on put on? Putting some of the um, some of the some of the attachments as their own as their own images for the benefit of character sheets. I have no objection whatsoever to providing that. Um, the only thing to bear in mind is there are a lot, mm -hmm. a, a lot of images. Um, I mean, it's what is it sixty? Yeah. Plus then the weapons. Mm -hmm. Um. It's quite a lot to sort through. Um, but if someone wants it, I would be more than happy to provide it. It's literally just sending a folder. It would be no worries at all. I, I always sort of assumed that people will just kind of either sketch badly or just draw some rectangles or triangles or circles or whatever mm -hmm. and just sort of put, put things together. But yeah, if people wanted it for the digital version... I mean, my my ideal would be to do something a bit like the the weapon system in in Resonance of Fate, mm -hmm. where I can do something that lets you build it for you. Yeah. Um. But that might be that might be a bit over ambitious for how much money I think this this Kickstarter is going to bring in, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But thank you very much. I I've really enjoyed building this game and and i've actually had a picture of it behind me for literal years since i moved into this house mm -hmm. um some years ago during covid mm -hmm. um i've had i've had this like i've known i wanted to do it and i've been ready but i've never quite got there so it's really good to finally be there and see it on kickstarter and see tremendous amount of support you know 85 backers for mm -hmm. a pocket game in january that it, it, it's very clear to me that people are interested in this and would like to see it work. 
So, I mean, that's inspiring in itself. Mm -hmm. And with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. It's it's nothing at all. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I hope to be back again soon. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, maybe you'd like me to spend a moment telling you what I might be back again soon about. I'm game, so what, what did you have in mind? Kaiju. Okay, you have my attention. <laughs> um, I, you know, you know, I, I was only relatively recently in my life, uh, introduced to Kaiju. Um, yeah, I, I'd heard of Godzilla and whatnot, but, um, I, I only watched my first Godzilla movie a couple of years ago now. And, um, uh, it was the legendary Godzilla movie. And then, and then I watched the, um, the one that was like like the it was roughly around 2000 that it came out and it was it had all of the kaiju and aliens and it was quite crazy pants it was a it was a japanese one mm -hmm. um but it was dubbed yeah. um but um uh was it was it oh i forget what it's called um but uh, you know we 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 had a we had a kaiju evening myself uh, my friend Lucas, uh, Leo, um, and Robert all all came along, and we sat down. And we watched some kaiju movies. It was it was a it was a laugh, mm -hmm. and um, I sort of got to thinking. Well, I don't really want like I I don't. If I was to do a role playing game of this, so, someone asked me. I think sat there. Someone asked me how would you do a role playing game of this, and I said, well, you wouldn't be allowed to be like a Godzilla or a. Uh, or, or or a King Ghidorah or anything like that. You'd be, you you'd have limited strength, and you'd have to work together in sort of a symbiotic relationship between the between the kaiju. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to protect yourself from a humans and b other kaiju, right? Oh, bigger kaiju, alpha kaiju, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they were talking about they were talking about alphas in in uh, uh, the legendary King of the Monsters, um, mm -hmm. and then obviously it's a big plot point in uh, Godzilla vs Kong as well. And I thought, well, it would actually be quite a lot of fun if you were a beta rather than an alpha, but together you'd kind of like territorially you could be an alpha, you could beat an alpha off from your territory if you work together. And then I started thinking about what a, what would a beta kaiju look like? Well, they're obviously smaller. Immediately, they're smaller. Fine. Easy. Then you've got... Right, well, Godzilla has like five or six different powers, depending on, you know, which version it is. So I'd want you to have one. And that way, you as a group roughly equal an alpha. So, you know, you... you you might be able to regenerate or breathe atomic breath or swim really fast, but that's it. You get one of those things. You don't get all of them. Mm -hmm. And that then means, uh, you know, or, or you might come back to life like Mothra. Um, that that is that is an option I want to give. And and that means that you're then building a group together that work together to to defend your territory. Also, since you're smaller. Human weapons are going to have more of an effect on you. So I want humans, your relationship with the humans, to be important in this game. It's it's there. Um, it's a little like the party confidence in Era Liars that mm -hmm. I wrote. Um, I, I want I want it to be able to drop below a certain point, and the humans just turn up and start shooting you. Mm -hmm. And you 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 know if you if you wreck the city too much, they see you as as much of a threat as the alphas. So be really careful when you pick up a skyscraper and throw it at someone, right? Mm -hmm. So all of those elements are something I want to include. I, I I think it's a really compelling possibility, and I'm I'm this close. I'm just about there. I'm really hoping that it's gonna it's gonna materialize for me quite soon. Mm -hmm. So I would hope to come back and talk to you about that. Yeah, There's nice. also something else I'm working on. I've been working on a, a, a Dark Souls inspired game for a little while. Yeah, I do remember you mentioning that a few, a few years back. 
At 1 a.m., I cracked it. I've worked out how combat can work in a different way to the way I would normally do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to try and pretend it's completely unique, but it's quite rare for role-playing games to approach it in this way. And uh, yeah, I now need to start getting some getting some artwork sorted out for that. And then finally, uh, one of the games that I did as part of the Era Zone Prototypes project I did uh, almost a year ago now. Mm -hmm. Um... Era Friction. It's a it's an action hero game where you, you play as an action hero, mm -hmm. and, and it's deliberately supposed to be very tongue in cheek. I've I've put together the prototype, and it's made me want to finish the game mm -hmm. and 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 make probably just a pocket, but but make the game make 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 the game happen. That mm -hmm. that makes me want to do it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd certainly be looking forward to it. But with that said, oh. A, since I do want to give my sincere thanks once again, as mentioned before, and as well to every, everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay... Fucking frosty, everybody!